Welcome to Bear, brought to you by Giddy, the world's largest sexual health platform. I'm Marissa Sullivan, and today we are here with Susan Holmes McKagan, supermodel, best selling author, and journalist. And I feel like you have a million other occupations, just a talented, badass business. Biatch. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> what an intro. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Marissa. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming over and filming this fun segment. I know a lot of my friends who are models have had kind of those uncomfortable moments. Has there ever been a time you had to make a quick decision of how you were going to handle like a difficult situation? Um, yeah, there was a lot of times. Um, and I'm very thankful because I have daughters, two daughters, and they do, they both model. They've, you know, worked for everyone from Pat McGrath to Skims and Calvin Klein mm -hmm. ads. Um, so Grace and May. Yeah, Mae Grace Kagan. and May McKagan. <laughs> yeah. Very proud of them. Um, <laughs> But uh, they don't, they're much more protected nowadays because in mm -hmm. my time, I mean, you would be hit on all the time, you know, skeezy kind of casting directors or mm -hmm. photographers or agents even. I mean, it was, okay, let's just put it like this. It's, I mean, it's, it was all over CNN. One of my former modeling agents in Paris um, was linked to the, Mm. The Epstein oh, thing. Gotcha. This was after I had been there. I I don't know. Maybe he was. Um, yeah, which is it's kind of scary. It's like and very scary. Then there is that dark side. I think they think they can prey on the ones maybe that aren't necessarily going to make it. Mm -hmm. um, that you know, a lot of them are from um, poverty-stricken countries or families, and they just want to get right, the hell out of right. there, and they'll do whatever it right. takes, and they're just so young, Yeah, you know, and they'll be like, you know, they'll just brew up some story. I know Carrie Otis is really oh, um, yeah. going to bat right now against mm -hmm. one of our agents who, unfortunately, yeah, was pretty bad, too. So Ugh. there's now there's, like, um, Models Alliance, Mm -hmm. So there's somewhere to go. That's an official and anonymous and kind yeah, of that whole thing. Yeah. How did those experiences test your strength? Um, because I, you know, I can see you learning a lot about yourself as you make those tough yeah, decisions. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I can always look at myself in the mirror. I have scruples. I never did anything that was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe I didn't get necessarily as many. <laughs> Some of the work, you know, but um, I feel very, I don't know, I, I just have a strong sense of inner self, thank God, and knew. Um, Were you the person that you, the other girls would come to? You seem like that mother hen that someone yeah. was like, oh, this person did, that. and did you ever have those moments where people, girls were leaning on you? I mean, I guess I'd leadership? like to think I was strong <laughs> and a pillar of strength, but... Um, <laughs> I, there's a lot of um, facades in that industry because mm -hmm. it's all about um, looking good, how you look, like the exterior. So mm -hmm. everyone kind of projects this like stronger, you know, confident sense of self. I think models uh, actually feel the most insecure out of mm -hmm. anybody. People think, oh, yeah. they must be so snobby and stuck up. Uh, I say no because we know every single inch of our, you know, makeup what's wrong with us we've had so many rejections and you're getting judged on the most you know yeah and your superficial appearance. thing yeah. if you ever faced rejection did you ever have issues with like how how much did you were you always naturally thinner how much did you have to watch your weight and did you ever have like oh maybe i'm not going to eat today like most well, go through yeah that's a good question because i will say there is a misconception with that I'd say the majority of the models are naturally thin. Like mm -hmm. I used to get teased in school, you know, mm -hmm. like toothpick or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I like I would be trying to gain weight. Mm -hmm. I remember doing an Armani fitting in Milan and like trying to breathe out because I couldn't fill the suit out. <laughs> <laughs> like stuff like that. So a lot of the yeah. girls are just kind of gawky, gangly. Like they're tall and they're young, so they haven't quite grown into their full shape yet. Mm -hmm. So... Of course, there are the, a few, I'm sure, like any, like even in normal society. Any, any industry or any yeah. woman yeah, facing any kind of rejection. or. But now, thank God, the boundaries have opened exponentially. You know, there's plus size, you know, petite, um, 
handicapped, um, yeah. you know, yeah, skin, beauty. you know, Winnie Harlow beauty with her beautiful skin. It's, um, it's cheesy and overused, but it is yeah. true. And yeah, um, yeah. there's so many different definitions of what beauty is. And you can ask 50 men what they think beautiful is, and it's going to be like all completely so different. So true. Did you see that? There was like a nice sort of layout and they went country by country of what oh, um, each is the perfect kind of dream, woman like dream, dream woman, woman yeah. for a guy in like mm -hmm. Spain or yeah. like the States. And they were like, oh, it was really fascinating to really? see. Like, it's cool. Yeah. Their dream girl. And let's, and let's so go, different. Ever. And so the book, it's based on true stories, but partly fictional. It is, it is a novel. It is fiction. Yes. But um, they say, write what you know about. Yeah. So I did. And sometimes you can tell more about uh -huh. a person's story through a fictitious novel because, because there aren't those fences. No, yeah, you're not barred in. Yeah, you can, you can have, be, more have more fun. freedom. You're exactly. like, hey, they don't know if I'm telling the truth or not. Yeah. So, of course, you're writing about um, coming to age in New York yeah. as a model and falling in love. Right. With your real life rock star <laughs> husband, Duff McKagan, face player of Guns N' Roses. No right. deal. Yeah. <laughs> so that's covered in, in the Westies. Is that the gun? The yeah, Westies yeah. is a fictional band. Yeah, the Westies, which. And oh, yeah, a, here we go. There's a record. So this is a fic the band stemming from the Val Rose book. Oh, signed by and, Duff. Yeah, signed by Duff for Yay. you. Yay. And um, <laughs> this is actually um, sort of like an almost famous Stillwater, the band, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. this is West the Westies, is the band of the book. And there's a couple songs on here. And. It's Duff on bass, um, Izzy Stradlin on guitar on one of the songs, and cool. Slash on guitar, nice. and Puffy from Faith No More on drums. So they were never released before tracks That's that really we had cool. in the vaults, and they went yeah. perfectly with the book. So, And, and the best thing about the book is it's kind of like my way of giving back because a portion of the proceeds go to Music Cares. Oh, good. I love Music Cares. It's such a wonderful mm -hmm. foundation. I mean, they truly, truly give back to so many. They've helped a lot of people we know um, battling addiction mm -hmm. and needing help counseling or a place to live. Mm -hmm. And um, But they also help people with HIV, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. I mean, yeah, they're they, a great organization. They're wonderful, yeah. So when you're so you're flitting around um, becoming this international model, <laughs> and so at what point? Tell if you want to tell. I know I remember in the book, kind of. I don't. I don't know how similar or different the real life version is of you meeting your husband and going through that. But can you take us through that first? Because obviously we talk a lot about relationships. We just celebrated our twenty first wedding anniversary. Wow! In a row. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> We all say in a row. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot of those. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I am very blessed and fortunate because I met, um, you know, and married my best friend, the love of my life, like genuinely a, I mean, he's a bassist. He's a team player. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets like, it's not just always about me, you know. Duff is a great guy. I call him my true blue dude because mm -hmm. he's just, you know, salt of the earth. Yeah, he seems to handle it, yeah. all the fame very organically and just, it doesn't seem, just meeting him a few times here and there, just... Yeah, he's easygoing. You know, you know, not Duff. what some yeah. of these other guys in the no. industry can be like. Well, he's the youngest of eight children. Okay, so, so there you go. his older brothers and sisters would have not allowed that. You guys seem so romantic. Do you have those kind of date nights where you do little things to, you know, like yeah. celebrate yeah, the, those early do. years. We definitely, especially when the kids were younger. Mm -hmm. Now we get to have date night like every night, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Um, <clears throat> but I think it's super important to keep a dedicated day of the week. You know, every Friday mm -hmm. is your night to, you know, wine and dine me. <laughs> yes. And um, basically just dedicate something to do together. That's the thing, too. Don't ever just throw in the towel. Like, mm -hmm. always keep trying and keeping it a little fresh. And, like, don't try not to take that person for granted totally. ever. So, like, yep. I've taken motorcycle lessons. I got my motorcycle license. We'll ride <laughs> Harleys to, like, I've learned to play some guitar. Nice. Um, we took a boating, like, a navigational course together. That's cool. Because we were renting this, yeah, like, small kind of yacht thing. Yeah, activities and branching out. And, yeah. That's a good, that's great advice. He'll write me a song. Okay, that always helps. I mean. That's an easy one. No, I'm just kidding. That's but pretty sweet. That, I mean, that is beautiful. And even if you're not a musician, 
guys out yeah. there. Just write, write a, a poem. poem. Yeah, or yes. just write a little note. One note, one yeah, line. Yeah. yeah, like switch it up. Don't yes. always just say I love you, you mm -hmm. know? Like like say it, you know, show it. Making then, a little effort, even if you're slammed and busy, just a teeny little text. Thinking about you, slammed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Call you later. Yeah, a little yeah. heart emoji, you know, the heart emoji Yeah, thing. just to show that you're on their mind. <laughs> yeah, don't just send the, the D pic. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even go there. Okay. <laughs> what is that? What, like, I know. Don't ever send an unsolicited no. dick pic. I'm enjoying our a weekly Sirius XM show, Duff and I do. Yes. Three <laughs> chords and the, the truth. truth. And you film straight from here? Well. Or it we, depends where you are. Yeah, exactly. We're mobile. Because <laughs> we're modern it. day Yeah, because you're in DJs. Seattle as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we have a studio in Seattle. Mm -hmm. We film there. Um, we just recently started adding video to our audio portion. So that was fun and unique. And then we filmed here um, and we've filmed on the road um, in our hotel room while we're on tour. Okay, so it's, it's just a really cool and sweet thing we get to do together. And we, another creative outlet, because we formulate the song list, we can play anything we want. Yeah. And it's on Ozzy Osbourne's station, Ozzy's Boneyard, right, right. Channel 38. It's a lot of fun. Um, and again, it goes hand in hand with what you're saying, like doing activities together. Yeah. And sharing, you know. And we've never done anything similar. really together, like business-wise, project project-wise. Project -wise. Yeah. So it was, yeah. we kind of tiptoed into it. We tried to show, and then that was cool, and it was very well-received, and then they added on some more shows, so I guess it's cool. doing really good. What are certain tips to make your partner feel reassured when mm. sometimes things I can mean, be a little To sketchy? be honest, we're still working on that. Mm -hmm. And I've always said to him, it doesn't happen as frequently because now we know each other so well. Yeah. You know, it takes time to reach that point. Um, and the fact that people do have jeal jealousy moments or fights, mm -hmm. I always told Duff, I'm like, the day that I don't get mad at you is the day that shows I don't care. Right. So you, that's happen. the day you should worry. <laughs> Very good point. So, of course. So, guys, don't be too scared off. Yeah, a little insecurity it and shows jealousy. That you're into a little your jealousy man. Is, healthy. is healthy for sure. A little bit. Not too yeah. much. Yeah, not too much. Because then it's just not going to work, you know? Um, basically, if you can't trust your partner, I mean, you're just not going to have, it's not going to work. And let's, talk, I want to talk about his sobriety. He's, uh, he's more in control. You know, he's always he's, there. Yeah. It's not like, not there. Yeah. Um, I, you know, but he's cool. He, he's situations. cool if I drink. He's been sober for so long mm -hmm. that, that he's comfortable yeah, enough with it. Yeah. He, he's, he'll say, I That's drink enough great. for everyone in this building for uh, 10 years <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> I got you covered. What you and Duff have been through, traveling all around, you're the supermodel, he's the rock star, you're seeing all this highly sexual, over sex yeah. environment your whole life. How does that affect your parenting? Does <laughs> it make you just so <laughs> paranoid? Because right? you guys have seen it all. We're like so, ab fab, <laughs> yeah. the, the ab fab. How I did think you we guys just try to them? honestly lead by example would mm -hmm. be the first thing that comes to mind because, um, even May has said to me when she was dating uh, before that um, she's like, would my, would my dad do this? Like if she was yeah, dating someone, would he yeah. act this way or say to that To my thing? mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've just kind of led by That's being great. trying to be role models as best we could. Yeah, not forcing too much on them, just showing yeah, like, love and partnership. Just literally demonstrating in our day-to-day, -day, like mm -hmm. being cool people that treat – other people with like kindness, love, and respect, but in a fun way <laughs> too, of course, you know. I'm just like the mama bear, mm -hmm. like nurture. Nurture, and I probably ask them too many questions. Like, I'm more <laughs> the question, like, mm -hmm. so the thing, you know, with him, what, where did you go? You know, what did he say? Like, where is he from? I don't know. More in that department. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, your journalism coming yes, out. Yes, the journalist. <laughs> How have you taught them from what you've experienced and seen about body confidence? I wanted to emphasize to focus on being healthy, not thin. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, yeah, in the modeling industry, a good majority, I'd say the, the majority of the models are naturally like tall and thin and skinny or whatever. 
but there are, you know, you hear of the other ones that were battling um, eating disorders mm -hmm. and how they came so close to dying and all that stuff. And hey, we live in LA, good part of the year, so they grew up here. Yeah. And I mean, this is probably one of the toughest, LA and New York, probably the two toughest cities, I'd say, in the whole to wide raise, world. And to raise kids. To, and, and to raise kids. Up, yeah. So I just always wanted to emphasize from day one, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember, you know, always telling them, you know, what you see in a magazine or what you see on Instagram, um, you know, people edit their photos, mm -hmm. stuff's photoshopped in magazines. Yep. It's not literal, you know, uh, it's just to project inspiration. Yeah. And You're almost like a canvas, and they add on to yeah, you and kind of manipulate enhance or, what you know, they want. Yeah, so I told present. them that at a very young age. You know, yeah. this is not how she woke up this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, so they had a strong sense of like awareness with the industry mm -hmm. portrayal versus real life, and also I love to cook, and we grew up like always cooking. Like they they both are pretty exceptional cooks on their own nice and they take pride in like sharing you know recipes with me um or you know I have this new like yesterday Grace and I she's a pescatarian she was like oh I have this new vegetables and miso roasted sauce thing <laughs> she shared with me because we went to Disneyland the, uh, the day before our family fun day at Disneyland and fun. we were like oh my god we need to eat healthy yeah, yeah. so everything so in moderation cute. I think the cutest family. and now <laughs> she's learning to, she's training to be a yoga certified instructor so she great. she knows to be strong and healthy mm -hmm. is key not skinny and like a certain size gene or whatever. We talked about growing up in LA and New York, like how scary it is. I'm so glad the girls seem on like a great path, but sh you know, we know how it is around here and you know, the drugs that are around. So some yeah. of their peers and the people they've grown up with are being in scenes where they're feeling pressured. Like how scary is this fentanyl least? Oh my God, cocaine? that is so like, freaking scary. And, Cause a, just a very, very small amount is enough to kill you <laughs> like this is so awful but why is this not purpose, the biggest but... forefront of even stronger than oxycontin because I, I know that's a big yeah so battle. is that something you kind of had that to is talk so scary to about, yeah um, no joke you, just from what you guys have seen and obviously what duff has gone through for our parents out there what mm. age do you have that discussion when you see that there might be some pot smoking yeah. or drinking starting is that when you introduce yeah kind of the don't, I, don't I don't know no the exact age kind of i just remember having conversations with them, especially them growing up in a house where Duff is sober. Mm -hmm. So they know that he's, you know, you know, he almost died for, for from that, you know, um, addiction stuff. And it can run in your family. It's genetics too, you mm -hmm. know. So just making them aware and it doesn't just start one day. Again, it starts from like every single day implementing, like demonstrating, showing them like living a solid life, leading by example, mm -hmm. making the right decision. Like, okay, you're going to make mistakes. We all, you know, that's part of growing up. We get that. But like try and make the lesser of the severe mistakes. And if you do get caught up in that, we're here for you. We yeah. don't judge. We always said you go to a party Call us any time of the night, no questions yeah. asked. That you that know, seems so to important. Be the best parents way to do it, from what I've heard, you know, just from every all parents that I've talked to, you know, because kids can be so scared to go to their parents, scared they're going to get in trouble. Yeah, and then something happens to their friend or themselves. Yeah, and um, so and then growing up, and not, I'd rather have them call us than an Uber. Yeah. You know, like it, not two like in a, the morning, or not like an appeared. Friend, like a friend type thing but just somebody you could always like a shoulder they could always lean on and tell anything yeah it's an open their protection is your number one yeah you know. yeah safety security your health is everything susan this is so great thank you so much thank you so much you just, it's been I'm, a lot of fun